Okay, we're starting back up where we left off, and now I'm going to start sewing together all the pieces for the hood, and the head, and the face. So the first thing that I do is I pick out all my pieces that actually have darts in them, and I like to sew the darts first. Uh, here's the back hood that we finished in the last recording, and it has two darts in it. It's got a dart right there. These are both behind the ears to help make this part of the hood curl more. So I'm going to go through and pick out all my pattern pieces that have darts in them. Got that one, muzzle, chin, eyebrows, cheeks, and that's it. I'm going to go, go through and I'm going to pin these all down. What I find helps out a lot with pinning down darts is I actually pull the fur fall, blah, 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 the fur apart, like so, actually spreading it right where the dart is, and then pinching it together. You can also, if you want, use a slicker brush, but usually darts aren't very big, so just doing that simple gesture of spraying the uh, fur helps make it easier to pinch together. Well, I like to go through and pin everything first. And I'll pile it up and I'll sew it all together. Again, just taking my finger and just dividing the fur along the seam line, well, along the dart, and pinching it. Same thing here, it's got a little dart right there. So I'm going to pull the fur away from the dart and pinch it together. I usually use about two pins for anything from three quarters to, you know, however long, the so three quarters of an inch to however long you need the dart to be. Anything under that, I just use one pin for the dart. And just brushing the fur away and pinching it. And here's a brow. The brow has two darts. Same thing. Brushing it away. Pinching. Now this one, the darts are a little close together, so I can only pin one at a time and sew it. So I'm going to sew this one and then while I have it up there I'm going to pin the other one after I get done sewing it and do it again. So it's one of those things you can use your own judgment on. Now this one's going to be a little tricky. This one actually has essentially three darts. It's got one down here, which we can just simply pinch together and sew. Then it's got one on either side. This is for the chin. So I got to sew that one, sew this one, and then I got to put this whole piece together. So first I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch. This was a flipped pattern. That's why it's got that one long little dart down there. And again, I'm only going to be able to pin one. I got to sew that and pin one at a time for the other size. And this one is the muzzle. 
This has got three darts on either side of the piece. Again, it's another flip pattern. And yet again, you'll only be able to sew a couple at a time. Now these are far enough apart that I can sew these two separate darts. We'll leave the one in the middle unpinned. Once I sew these, then I go back and finish sewing this one. Essentially you just want to try to get as many things pinned to be sewn as you can. Those are all the dart pieces. Kitty, you gotta move. Can't sew when you're sitting in my spot. Okay, first thing I want to do is these ones that need to be sewn and pinned again. So I want to just mobile first. And I'm just doing a straight stitch. I have this machine so strong that some of those pulls the thread right out of my fingers. Okay, so I sewed both of these darts. And this is what you do when you sew a dart, you just pinch it, sew it, and in turn creates this lovely little curve in your fur. So now I'm going to go back and pin that middle dart so I can sew it. That's a bigger size one. I'm going to actually get a glue on it. I'm going to use two pins. Thank you. 
Darts all sewn for the muzzle. I'm gonna keep going. There's just itty bitty little darts here. I'm just gonna cut off a little bit of backing there is. Do that one big dart. Let me see. One dart there. There's two separate little darts here, and then I will pin this whole big piece. Well, it's kind of small, but in this case, it's big. Again, it's going to take two pins. that out. Let's get a quick brush. Flip it again. Trim it. There we go. And now It's a boat, <laughs> but it's a chin, essentially. And that's what the darts do, they make the fabric curve.
Yep, darts are awesome. You will learn to love darts. You will hate them at first, but you will learn to love them. <laughs> Especially whenever you're working with foam heads, very important to have darts because if you try to take something that's not curved and stretch over foam, all you're going to do is squish down the foam, you're going to lose your shape. That's why I learned about using darts from the beginning because my stuff started out as foam. You don't have to use it so much with resin blanks, like just plain resin blanks, because you can stretch the fur or a hard surface, but foam, it's very important. Once you get your dark sewn, I'm not worried about the back of the hood here, so I'm just going to cut this off. But for your shorter pieces of fur, I will recommend brushing them out first. So now, that hood has got a really nice curvature to it. And you can really see now how that would stick in the back of a head. All because of those two other darts. already done. Now this one I'm going to brush out. And I'm going to trim it. Now I'm not concerned about double or triple stitching darts because they're so small. And again, this is going to be on the face, so it's going to be all glued down and the glue is going to help support everything too. It's mostly in the back of the hood and the neck area that I like to reinforce my stitching. Because those areas will get stressed. Brush my brows. Brows.
Even though using a slicker brush is good enough to get the fur out of the darts, little tiny seams. Especially if it's already short fur. Super easy. Make sure you're doing this over a trash can too, because you'll find fur trying to fly everywhere when you're brushing it out. Okay, now we can start getting the fun stuff. I'm gonna start sewing the face together. Since I nose the muzzle, and this seam right here is the front of the nose, I'm going to go ahead and just sew that. start looking at my other pieces here and see what else I can sew together. I know I can sew this neck together. Well, that's hopefully easy. This is quite literally just two pieces.
So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to pin together as many pieces as I can. Now when you have a partner to help you out, you can like pin things and then hand it to them and they sew and then they hand it back to you and you pin more things or while you're waiting for them to sew something you can work on something else and pin it together. So you quite literally like pinning things and handing it to them, pinning things and handing it to them, they hand it back and it gets done way faster. That's why I used to do when I did first suits full time. And she would help me out with sewing. Well, my mom, before I had him. And again, like I mentioned before, my other um, recordings, very important that take pictures of your pattern. So if at any point you get confused and you don't remember what goes with what, or something doesn't make any sense, or something doesn't line up properly, you've got those pictures to look back at for reference for whenever your pattern was still whole and it was on the head. So I got the muzzle and the cheek pinned. Neckline pinned. I can also attach the chin to the neck. all one big piece of white. I usually start with the middle line, especially with the flip pattern, and then I go to the edge and I pin the edge to make sure that line matches up. And again, anything that's got curves, it's very important to have those little hash marks, those little lines that you put for where your division lines were that match up. So you want to make sure that you match those up. Otherwise your pattern is not going to curve properly. And again, I'm pinning about every inch or so. You want to make sure you pin a lot so you don't want your 
fur slipping on you. And I'm always tucking my fur away from the seam every time I pin. So now I've got my chin, my neck, and my chest all pinned together. So it will literally fold just like this. It's kind of hard to tell because it's got the pins in there right now, but okay. Now the temple, I might have to actually hand sew my brow in there. Now you see, that's one of those curves that I might not be able to do with a sewing machine because how tight of a curve it is. I'm going to try and see if I can pin that. What I want to do here is I want to sew on this middle strip first, and then I will sew the brows on. Um, yes, I'll most likely be auctioning this off. Um, if it's an auction, the base price will start at 800 Actually, it might start at 850 because it does have LEDs in it and stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and sew this piece just so I don't get confused. This is a little difficult because it's got 
little 90 degree angle right here that I gotta sew. I keep doing this to myself. <laughs> situation that's good to have a seam ripper. Okay, let's try it again. how to do this. But this is a long time since so I've done 90 degree angles. I kind of forgot how I did it. <laughs> and since shiny fighter suits, that was a long time ago. all day. I've only been working a couple hours on suits. <laughs> there we go. 
go. Nice little 90 degree angle there. Yeah. All that trouble for that little angle right there. <laughs> Essentially, in order to get an angle like that, what you need to do is you need to sew your seam, just like this. Once you sew it and cut it, you have to literally take your fabric and pinch it in the opposite direction, just like that, and sew it across. So your original seam was here, and the other seam is right here. So it looks like that. Of course this isn't exactly a 90 degree angle, but basic idea is you gotta kinda pinch off the fabric. And it creates that nice angle right there. And now you can see my pattern work. Everything matches up. Oh, do you mean those lines? Those little lines, those are my little um, markers, essentially. This tells me where I need to line up the fabric. So I have it on each piece of fabric, and that is my guideline saying I need to match it up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach both the temples to this piece, and I'm going to try to see if I can get these brows attached via a sewing machine. If not, I have to hand sew. We're going to see how good my skills are. <laughs> Can I get it all down the sewing machine? Okay, so I'm going to pin these two together. Yeah, I don't know if you've noticed, whenever I'm uh, pinning my fabric, I tuck the fur, I pinch it together, but before I pin, you'll, you'll see me going like this, flipping the fabric. This is me looking on both pieces for those little marker darts, or those little marker lines, to make sure that they're lining up. Okay, so now I got this line here pinned. I'm going to sew that. Pretty much is just an exact copy of the side I just did, the 90 degree angle. So I'm going to sew this big long straight line first.
forehead marking. So one piece up here on the top. I'm gonna trim this off first. I'm not gonna do that. Anytime I'm working on a head, I always do the most difficult stuff first. Because usually it's the stuff I don't want to do. So it's kind of rewarding to have it done. And then you get to work on everything else and it goes by super fast. Like this right here is taking a long time. But once I get this and the eyebrows done, everything's going to get sewn really quick. It's going to be all bigger pieces. But essentially, I'm going to sew that little section right there at the very top of the head. Connected together. That's how the inside looks. I'm going to do that little 90 degree angle down here. And now that I know what I'm doing, I'm not going to be so confused this time. <laughs> Just like I was saying, I'm pinching at a completely ang different angle. I'm going to sew that little section. Now, if I wanted to, to probably make this easier myself, I didn't have to necessarily do that angle there. I could have just slowly sewn that to a point and then it's airbrushed. Or I could have like stopped it higher up here and airbrushed it. Like I could have stopped it higher up here. But I really wanted to get that. I want much of this to be sewn as possible. I don't I only want to do very little bit of airbrushing to it. So 
So now there's both the 90 degree angles. Now it's time to attempt the brow. Which again is another 90 degree angle. So that's going to be one of the first things that I tackle. What I'm doing is I'm just trimming the seam so it's all exactly the same length. That makes it easier for me to line it up. The first thing is to sew that one straight piece. It's about a 90 degree angle. And I'm going to pin this on both sides. Like I said, you always want to try and pin as much as possible at once. Especially if you're working on one big piece. You want to duplicate everything you're doing. And what I'm doing is I'm snipping right into the V of the 90 degree angle on this white piece. I'll make it easier for me to bend the fabric around that curve. So I just took a little snip right here just so it makes it easier for me to bend it around. I should be able to get this all sewn together tonight. I just might not have the ears attached. I should get the main of everything else sewn. I'll finish up the other ear tomorrow. And uh, I'll hand sew the one ear on and then I'll hand sew the other ear during the stream. So you guys can see how I do it. And that way the only thing I have left is to glue it all together. Well, granted, final touches and airbrushing and stuff. See, I read your mind. I didn't even have to <laughs> look at the screen. Yeah, chat's always a little laggy. Okay, so I'm going to sew these on. You actually can start seeing how this face is going to look a little bit more. Like if I flip it over, you can start seeing the pattern more.
Booger. Pull it right on my fingers again. Huh? No, I didn't break it. It's, just a, it's such a strong machine, it pulls a thread right on my fingers when I start a stitch. shoes. There we go. So I got this line here seam sewn. I'm going to do the same on the other side. usual, we'll just brush out the fur first before you start trimming it. Okay. Another severe angle. find the first little marking I have here so I can line them up. Right there. I'm going to try to see if I can sew this. I think the ability of me sewing this is really going to depend on how I pin this. 
I might just go and hand sew this because it's looking pretty crazy right now. I'm going to try. I'll try machine sewing it first. If I can't, then it's hand sewing. I'm making faces at this, but I really am like trying. <laughs> It could take longer for me to pin this than it actually is for me to sew it. <laughs> I think I'll do a little bit of fabric in order to be able to get around these curves. So, that's a pin job. That's kind of a basic idea how the marking is going to look. Of course, it's all scrunched up right now. I want to try to sew this. Let's see. A very tiny stitch. a lot of carefully twisting the fabric or turning the fabric. Lots of stopping and turning the fabric when we get around this curve. First curve will be the hardest. Did 
Yeah! So there it is from the inside. It looks like a little tail. <laughs> And from the outside, well, it needs to be brushed out because it's like looks like poop right now. There it is. And the reason it's so difficult because this area, it's kind of hard to see, is actually raised up. So it's got darts making this raise up. And it'll be more pronounced when you actually have it glued down. I'm trying to get an angle, see that. Okay, now I'll do the other side. Oi. So you can do some pretty crazy stuff with a sewing machine. Gotta pin a lot. Like I said, once I get this done, everything else is gonna be super easy, super fast. It's just this part takes a long time. This is where those little markings I made on the fabric are extremely important to make sure that I get this wrapped around just the right way. If I did not have these, this pattern would be very difficult to do. Even for hand sewing, it would be difficult to do. really should have chose like a more simplistic creature pattern to to a stream for like just a plain white or plain black thing and then done like a more advanced one being this 